So I do my live stream. I post my Ethan video. And in that Ethan video, people are like, Brittany, I can't believe you posted this video. What about Adam? Adam came back with the receipts. Well, I didn't see it yet, girl. So let's watch it together, girl. Okay. Shout out to Adam McIntyre. Maybe he's not such a clout chaser after all. We love to see it. Adam made a video one day ago. Ethan Klein lied about me. <gasps> Did Ethan lie about Adam? And then the second video, addressing Ethan, Lyons, Ethan Klein's apology. Okay, so let's go with the Ethan lied about me. So I'm just going to say this out loud before Adam talks. I haven't pre-watched. A lie has to be intentional. So the reason I say Adam's kind of a clout chaser is because this title insinuates that Ethan lied on purpose. But if Ethan just didn't know better, that's not a lie. That's a mistake. But see how much better the video is if Adam says he lied about me. But that's not what a lie is. Okay. So did Ethan lie or did Ethan make a mistake? Like, did he have the wrong information? This is important. But the reason I think Adam's like a little cloud chaser is because he's very good at marketing and it's not bad that he's a cloud chaser. Trisha's a cloud chaser. Like all these people who want to be famous are cloud chasers. Julia Fox is a f like all of them, which is peace and love Kim Kardashian. And they're very successful. And if you want to go down that route, you can, right? Okay. But let's see. Hi muckers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing very, very, very well. Okay, I am back from Tennessee and it was so, so, so much fun. And I have a couple videos that I was gonna post tonight, but I saw that the H3 podcast have just done a live stream in which they were talking about me. And I thought I would get to this before I get to the other videos. So mm -hmm. just know that they will be uploaded like a little bit after this or maybe tomorrow. But anyways, let's get to this video. So um, literally like they just went live and I got a bunch of tweets, bunch of messages from people saying that they were talking about me and we're gonna quickly watch these two little videos. Um, first one and second one. Um, no, this is in context of, I posted a video, I think two days ago in which I was talking about um, Ethan calling out Moses and Trisha. And in it, I had mentioned that, you know, a big part of this in my opinion is that, you know, Trisha's popular again, because there was a time period where Trisha's name would not be mentioned on H3 because she was so deeply unpopular and I still sound oh I thought Trisha wasn't being me mentioned on H3 because they were kind of like respecting their spaces I mean oh I'm now clicking is Adam saying that H3 is only talking about Trisha because she's popular again in the same way that you would talk about anyone who's in the mainstream I guess because sometimes I'll talk about certain YouTubers and everyone's like, why are you talking about them? And I was like, well, because they're on every podcast or you're seeing them or so is that why? You know what I mean? Is that why? OK, let's see. I'm behind that point and I stand behind the fact that, you know, there was Trisha was getting called out for talking about Ethan and Ethan doesn't get called out for talking about Trisha. And it was just my genuine opinion on that. And it still hasn't changed. Mm. Um, but I've seen that on the recent episode, Ethan has accused me of being a creep. He's accused me of being a creep towards his mother, Donna. And then there's another one that says Trisha also ghosted Adam McIntyre. Um, so let's get to this one about Donna because mm. I find this one really interesting. And I don't know if it's that Ethan doesn't know the actual story, but don't speak on it if you don't know the story because there's a truth there that is not great for you. But anyways, let's hear what he said about okay. me and being a creep towards his mother. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get to it. You know, for yep. him to understand it. <laughs> also, a little special mention to this little rat, Adam McIntyre. Fuck this dude. Bro. Yeah, Ethan does have a problem with the moment someone disagrees with him. But then everyone does, guys. Hello, Destiny burned a whole bridge with me because we disagreed on things. He'll claim it's about friendship, but it's not about friendship. Like, literally, it's not about friendship. It's because I called him out on things we disagreed. Ethan burns bridges. Destiny burns bridges. Lots of people are super in their ego on the internet. And that's why they burn the bridges, because they want you to always agree with them or always talk nice about them or, like, everything has to be done on their thing or they just assume you're malicious. Like, I always go through this thing where I purge a bunch of people from, like, my contact list because I get overwhelmed and anxiety and people will like take it personal like oh Brittany Simon unfriended me I didn't unfriend you because I think you're a bad person I just get overwhelmed like I promise you it's not that deep but that's the thing is like people get very hurt in this industry and Ethan is not exempt he's very bad at this Ethan is very bad at not getting his feelings hurt but so are so many other YouTubers. That's why I like really appreciate um, like Asmin Gold's attitude. Like Asmin made a video or no, no. Abin preached made a video about Asmin 
and they were calling him like a slob, but they really like Asmin. And the tech tone was like, I can't believe they hate you that much. And Asmin's like, no, 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 they don't hate me. They're just doing good clickbait videos. We talked in private. We're good. And that's what I'm trying to say. Ab and Breach and I, when we disagree, we manage to stay good. When they make a video about Asmin calling him a slob, Asmin's like, I get it. When Tectone sees it, though, Tectone's protective. And he goes, oh, they hate you, Asmin. I hate them. People get protective. Their egos get in the way. I love Tectone, by the way. But, like, I just, you know, there's, like, this attitude that people have that people don't understand. Ethan is not exempt from this. Okay? People are not exempt from this. They're, they get personally hurt. Okay? Let's go. By the way, let me play this. And I'll tell you guys why. <laughs> <laughs> All right, got that up. Again, Ethan only misses Trisha because Trisha is incredibly popular right now and her podcast is doing great. You dumb, silly fuck. First and I did say when I was watching this that Ethan went too hard on Adam because he's a kid. But also, Adam has to be honest, like, he is definitely trying to be popular, right? Like, he's going for something, you know, which is not bad. Being popular is not bad. I'm not saying that. But, you know, there's like two categories of people and I just think Adam falls into the category that's, like, very specific. You know what I mean? Like a Tana or Trisha adjacent, which are not my favorite, but okay. Still believe it. Still believe it. Oh, my pop. Listen, I'm not here to brag. My podcast is still way more popular. Okay? Just numbers-wise, let's just fucking say it. Okay? Dummy. You're the one that called Trisha a sate a spawn from satan if you want to talk about who's dick riding trisha because she's popular look in the so ironic by the way because even me and trisha have talked about this spawn of satan thing being you know who i think fucks over ethan more than anybody is his is his 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 um the people who work for him his researchers have you noticed that that every time ethan gets himself into hot water it's because of information his team gave him I swear to God, this has happened like 17 times. This happened with Abbott and Preach. This happened with so many other things. And I feel like Ethan has like, I mean, they're a good group of people and everything, but I really think they get shit wrong. You remember how I said in my live show a couple days ago, I hope they verified this comment. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I wondered, like, why don't people verify Ethan's, like, Ethan, like, why don't they verify, Right about the pop crave tweet of Queen Elizabeth reincarnation as an Irish person absolutely hate the monarch. Even Trisha has moved on from that, Ethan. My goodness. No fucking mirror, you little douchebag. And by the way. But also, I thought that Ethan said that his issue was with Moses. So mm -hmm. why is he getting so angry over Trisha? Because he loves Trisha. He's not angry over Trisha in that way. This kid, I disengaged from this kid when he was creeping on my mom. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Have I said this? I don't think so. This fucking little weird... But what does Ethan mean disengaging from me? Because that's not, that like factually is not true. Like that is not true. Since, cause he's saying from 2021 was whenever I, you know, first had been reached out to, been reached out to by Ethan's mother, Donna. Um, mm. So what he's saying there isn't oh, true. Oh, because... whoops. Did Donna reach out to Adam? That's weird. Donna, why are you messaging Adam? <laughs> I love Donna. That's such a boomer thing to do. See, my parents are elders in the community. They do not talk to young people. And honestly, I think we're all better off for it. Why would Donna reach out to him? Because there has been time since 2021 to 2024. But I guess that wouldn't be interesting. We're going to get to everything, though. Weirdo was chatting up my mom privately, one-on-one, -on -one, trying to become her best friend. Mm. They were chatting, calling, texting and shit. And then when he come into L.A., he was going to meet up with her one-on-one. -on -one. And I didn't know anything about this. And then when my mom told me, I was like, that's fucking weird as weird, shit. Bro. So this little freak was trying to weasel his way into a friendship with my mom. I found that very bizarre. Okay, I'm currently editing this video, but I was sent this. Hold on, Chad is saying, when Ethan and his mom did families, oh, shout out, Donna had watched a lot of Adam's drama videos and mentioned him by name on the podcast. Okay which is on the mm -hmm. H3 snark. And it was basically saying that Adam befriending Donna wasn't random or creepy. He was responding to this shout out she gave him on Frenemies. So this mm -hmm. was, her family, sorry. This was even before she had messaged me. So let's, let's, let's remember what actually happened here, right? There's, I have to, I have to call out. Um, oh, wait, there's a guy okay, by the name of Adam 
McIntyre, who's a cutie pie. He's oh, really God. sweet. <laughs> okay, I know and who he no, is. He's actually. not Beauty Pie. No, no, no. no. Oh no, I, I, I know mean, who Adam he is. A, he yeah. is. He's he's cute as a button. Well, let's throw a picture of uh, of him. He is cute as a button. I know who he is. Very nice young Irish lad. My mom. Yes. My I think he's adorable. Okay. And he shout out ex- for my mom. And he explains things. And then there's this other guy called. So I just wanted to include that also. Anyway, on with the video. Okay. Okay, now let's get to what actually happened. Now, I could scroll through every single DM with Donna, um, but I choose not to do that. Um, okay. So let's get to this. So I said, Ethan said I was creeping on his mother and trying to befriend her, which is so inaccurate. Donna started mentioning me first mm-hmm. on the family's podcast, mm-hmm. if you remember. And then she followed me, and then she privately reached out to me first. Oh. Donna reached out to me first. Oh, we love a receipt, Adam. Okay. Um, Not the other way around. Oh. And she gave me her phone number. Oh. I never gave her my... Donna? Donna? My phone number. And if, if you're all going to play the card, which I'm seeing a lot of people saying, well, Donna is a lot older. Well, I was, I was 18. Oh. I just turned 18. Oh. So... I don't necessarily think that works. I get- oh. Yo, Adam with the receipts. <laughs> Humans are so funny. What did Ethan, what is happening? And I was never, ever, ever going to post any of these. It's Ethan bringing it up. And I don't know if he just hasn't what? seen them because I have other DMs as well that I can post. Oh I have other God. DMs that are really interesting about Moses and Trisha, but you know what I mean? Like, all right. Um, so she gave me her phone number in which I've never even saved her phone number, never called her or never texted her. Oh, so Ethan is lying there. His mother was the one that gave me the phone. Oh, I love the chat right now. Okay. My chat is so funny. So first I see a comment that said, let's be real. Ethan completely lashed out at Adam because of his opinion on the Moses situation. Yes. I think he lied, mischaracterized, lied, mischaracterization to this degree out of spite, incredibly cringe behavior. But then another comment says, let's be honest. The only reason why, uh, Adam engaged with Donna was because she was Ethan's mom. So I think it is still the way, it's still way closer to um to the H3 opinion. Ooh, this is so fun. It doesn't matter. If I'm gonna be honest with you, all of this is silly. But I think it's silly because it's the internet. I think it gets heightened because it's the internet. I think everything gets more personal because it's the internet. I think like so many other things are happening because it's the internet. But obviously, like If a random old lady reached out to Adam and it wasn't Ethan's mom, he wouldn't talk to her. So that's first and foremost. Ethan knows that in some way it's inappropriate because like, why are you talking to this kid, whether Donna engaged or not? Like either way, it's weird. But also if you're family friends, it's different. But in this scenario, if some random old lady reached out to Adam, it's not like, you know what I mean? If some old lady shouted him out on a podcast and it wasn't Ethan's mom, it would just be some random old lady. Like you probably wouldn't think about it, right? So it's not like, you know what I mean? Like, this is all pretty silly, but it's not like, it's not like we wouldn't be here if this didn't have to do with H3 at the end of the day. And so like, you know what I mean? And Ethan, Ethan has some major issues with the way he lashes out. But Ethan and I disagree on the way, um, not that it matters that we disagree, but I think we're in a different bubble. You, I, he, like we're all in different bubbles about how we handle things. And I'm not even saying he's handling the Moses thing perfectly. I'm just saying I understand the perspective. And I even more agree with it, give or take. Because again, people who try to silence you so you can't stand up for yourself, they're the red flag to me. They're the red flag. If you had a true experience and you feel like it was your experience, you can share it and then I will counter. But I would never tell someone like, you better not talk about me. It's like, You can talk about me if you want, but if it's untrue, I'm going to defend myself. But like, I would never tell someone like, don't talk about me. I can't believe you're still talking about me. It's like, talk about me if you want, bro. But like, it's that fact that there's like an, 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 a mode. Now, if you want privacy, that's different. But again, frenemies can never be forgotten. It will always be a thing. Moses decided to date a content creator, right? Like, this is something I learned from dating a non-content creator, like a non-person on the internet. Regardless of how much privacy you want, you chose to date a content creator. So Moses dated Trisha. So, and he became a content creator. Moses is now, I mean, he was kind of an artist before. So he was trying to be a public person. That's what I mean. Why is Moses pretending he's like a public person or a private person when he literally was an artist before? You know what I'm saying? It just, 
him pretending to want privacy is so strange when he put it all out there. Anyways, anyways, there's always an appropriateness for how private you want to be. I'm not saying there isn't. But I feel like there's something here that feels dishonest from Moses' perspective. Okay, with all of this to say, Adam's cracking me up right now and I appreciate the receipts because this does make Ethan look absolutely ridiculous. Number, and I never called her. I wanted to keep it on Twitter. I don't know if Ethan doesn't know the full context, but mentioning this is mm. so weird. And okay, I but if he said, oh, is this, okay, Adam, this is Adam's own tweet that he's reading. But I will say that if Ethan doesn't know the whole context, then he can't lie about Adam. He can only misunderstand. I would have never posted this if Ethan didn't bring it up, but please don't lie. Also, after this is when Donna sent my mother, Teddy Fresh. Donna was the one who asked me to go to dinner, but Ethan said that it was me to Donna. And I'm gonna show you proof because we may as well show proof instead of a one minute mentioning clip on a podcast. Um, so anyways, here we go. First time mm -hmm. Donna ever reached. Wait, Taylor says Ethan addresses these. Hold on, you said, who said Moses stealth, a 23 year old woman when he was in his 40s. I stealthing guys stealthing is bad. It's very, very bad. It's like it's as bad as poking holes in a condom. It's as bad as not taking your birth control. It's as bad as spreading an STI. It's as bad as it's a huge, huge, huge violation. Stealthing for those who don't know is when you promise to like wear a condom during sex and then in the middle of sex without your partner realizing it, you take off the condom. Okay. It's really, really bad. Okay, it's a huge violation of trust. It's a huge consent violation. And if Moses, you know, tr apparently he did that. Now, I don't know that for a fact. And as a content creator, I'm not trying to get sued. So I don't know if for a fact, but I have heard allegedly from people that it is definitely allegedly true, allegedly, that Moses did that. And that's, that's just, that's what I'm saying. Trisha married that person. out to me was to me she followed me and then reached out to me okay gary and i saw you had covid i'm glad your vaccination helped in your recovery though feel better donna klein thank you so much donna i discovered i had covid after apparently already having it not knowing or testing positive because of my vaccine then i did have symptoms it was lasted three days thanks okay that's a very nice comment that's very nice it was the 7th of august 2020 2021 so august september i don't know if that was before i turned 18 I, my birthday's the 30th of September, so I think it was. Yeah, so I think this was before my 18th birthday. Maybe, I don't know. Um, or maybe I just turned 18. I don't know if it was years, math, not great for me. Mm. Um, but this is for the inevitable, oh, well, Donna's a lot older. Well, I was 18, so. And I'm not saying there's anything weird with that, but all I'm saying is like, stop making this into- the Yeah, I agree with Adam here. Adam's obviously right. Like there's nothing weird happening here. I think Ethan, I don't know why Ethan thought there was something weird happening. Apparently you guys in chat are saying his mom maybe let him think it was weird, but like maybe they thought it was socially weird. Okay, there is a consequence. I will say there is a consequence to Ethan and Eli making friends. Adele said this in an interview. Adele said, I still have the same friends I had growing up before I was famous. She goes, and my circle has gotten smaller. And the more popular you become, it's really smarter to keep your circle small. But at the same time, it's like, how do you make new strong friendships? And it's hard. It's hard to say because again, dynamics are so different with different groups of people. Uh, it's hard to, mm -hmm. it's hard to say what's appropriate or not appropriate. Obviously, I think Adam's correct that it looks like Donna is the one who made the first move. Donna's engaging with him. And so, I, yeah, like, there's nothing creepy on Adam's end in regards to what happened with Donna. This weird thing. So Donna reached out to me first. Gary and I saw you had COVID. I'm glad your vaccination helped in your recovery, though. Feel better, Donna Klein. And I said, thank you so much, Donna. I discovered I had COVID after apparently having it and not knowing or testing positive because of the vaccine. Then when I did have symptoms, it lasted three days. Thankful and thank you for your message. All right, and then I go, I'll be in LA in November if you have any recommendations of places, things to do. It'll be my first time. Again, as an 18 year old, I sent this to every single person that I was talking to online at that time. And Donna responds and says, I'll make a list of things. How are you feeling? I'm babysitting my grandson, Teddy, right now. But when Ethan and Ella return from New York, if come out before the baby is born in November, perhaps we can all go out to dinner. Oh, Donna. that's such a mom move. 
That's such a mom move. Maybe we can all have lunch together. She probably just thought like, oh, they're all YouTubers. There's no reason not to do this. Oh, maybe Adam was secretly in the back of his head hoping to have a meetup, but maybe not. Maybe he was just making conversation. And maybe he's just a kid and he doesn't fucking know. But like, yeah. So Donna, Donna's thinking, oh, they're a YouTuber. We're a YouTuber. We know who each other are. We should go out to eat. But Ethan and Ela are thinking, why are you why are you trying to make collabs with this like random 18-year-old regardless? Like we can't be friends with every YouTuber or there's something that that's so funny. Okay. Donna said that, but did or did Ethan Klein not say that it was me begging to go to dinner, mm. befriending, beg like he's he's a fucking liar. He's a fucking liar. No, he's not a fucking liar. That's the dilemma with the internet. And that's why I say pop your bubbles. Look, I don't think people are lying. I think people are mistaken. They're deeply mistaken. But some people are lying or some people are omitting. I don't think Ethan is lying. I think that he's mistaken, right? We'll get to the apology after this, but that's always what I want to clarify. And Dr. Kirkonda has really inspired me to be clear, like very clear. Are you lying? Or are you gaslighting? Are you mistaken? Or are you unsure? Because it's really, really easy to assume the worst of people. And I just don't think so. You know what I mean? I don't think so. So again, is Ethan lying? Probably not. I go, oh, wow, thank you so much. There's so much to do, and I have no idea. Um, hope you and Teddy are well. I'm doing better, just resting a lot. My test results are all coming back good so far, and wow, mm -hmm. that'll be unreal. I'm sure y'all know the good dinner splots. And she says, here are some things I would recommend oh, to okay. see and do while you're here in L.A., which was my first question. I never said about dinner. I never said this. And by the way, why was he coming to L.A. as an 18-year-old, right? Like... That's a big trip to make. Where do you say he's from? Ireland? Scotland? I don't listen. Um, because that's a big move. Why did he come to LA? What was it for? I like Donna. I don't mean to throw this under the bus, but Ethan was the one who has literally framed this as if an 18-year-old was fucking creeping on his mother. You fucking weirdo. He's such a... Yes, so Adam's doing the same thing. So Ethan doesn't have the maturity or the wisdom or the discernment to understand the nuance. Adam doesn't understand the nuance. So Ethan goes, Adam's a creep. Adam goes, Ethan's a liar. And I'm like, we're all so stupid. <laughs> we're all so stupid. All of us are so stupid. We're all so dumb. You know what I mean? Like, we're all so dumb. And yes, I agree. Alice says, I don't think Ethan meant creepily sexually. No, obviously he meant creepy, like, like not in a sexual way, but in a, um, infiltrate the old person circle way, you know, you know what I mean? Right. Or they're doing this for clicks. No, 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 no. Listen, when I say this, there is difference between uh, certain YouTubers, in my opinion, do it purely for clicks. We're going to talk about this later with Valeria. Let me tell you how I'm about to pop a bubble about different types of YouTubers and why they don't feel organic. There's too much organic in Ethan and even Adam for it to be purely for clicks. Yes, they're cloud chasers. Yes, they wanna be famous or slash successful. Yes, they wanna be in the news, but they're not viral seekers in the same way as like a Mr. Beast, right? Like Mr. Beast is like a viral seeker. That's his thing. Adam is like, I wanna be popular and I wanna do commentary. Ethan is like, I wanna be rich and successful and I wanna do commentary. Like everyone has their different modes of, you know, so I don't think they're just like, they're not manufacturing this for clicks. Sorry. That's what I assume you meant. I don't think they're manufacturing it for clips like a Tana maybe does or like other people. Not that Tana always does it, but it's, you know, when I'm okay. Logan Paul here, the Paul brothers manufacture drama for clicks. That's a good example. Okay. So I don't think, I don't think Ethan and, 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 and Adam are manufacturing drama for clips. That's different right? Or clicks, but they, they do benefit from it, which is, you know, obviously every YouTuber hopes like they become the focus of the conversation to like be talked about, right? Because that boosts everything. Like people talking about me is only good for business. It is literally only ever good for business. That's why some YouTubers try not to talk about other YouTubers because it's bad for like, it keeps them away from the views, but also it brings their like their crazy audience into your sphere. But yeah. Okay. Let's see. Fucking weirdo. Disneyland, Universal Studios, Griffith Park, Observatory, see a play at the Dolby, 
or whatever, theater, Hollywood Walk of Fame, Hollywood Bowl for music, Getty Museum, and there's so many awesome restaurants. And she goes, uh, Neptune's Net is a fun local small. Wait, okay, hold on. Just wait until Ethan calls his mom to try to manipulate her into thinking Adam was not a good guy in order to get his mom to say bad things about him. Uh-oh, Ethan. Do Ethan and Hila feel paranoid? Are they going through a paranoid stage where they're, like, afraid that Adam's just in their life for a wrong reason? Mm. Okay, well, wait. Is that going to come up? I assume that's going to come up soon. A beach restaurant, and this message says, Gary and I could meet you there. So she says... Oh, wait, Taylor says Ethan was kidding about that. Oh, was Ethan being sarcastic? Okay, okay. We'll wait. We'll see. I think it's going to, is it going to show in the apology? That her and Gary will take me out to dinner. Wow. I go, thank you so much, Donna. This is so helpful. I really appreciate it. And then I say, would you have any availability the 15th of November? That yes, in the podcast. He didn't call Dana, call Dan Donna to try to frame anything. You could tell he was joking. I swear half the miscommunication, 99% of the miscommunication on the internet is people joking and nobody knows. Half the time I'm telling a joke, people will be like, I can't believe Brittany said that. I was like, I was laughing. I was literally ugly laughing when I said it, which indicates humor. Are you sure autists are the ones who don't know humor? Are you sure neurodivergents are the ones who can't read the room? Because I swear all these people claim to be neurotypical and they can't tell a joke when I say one. You know what I'm saying? That's a Monday. 15th or 16th works. I go, I can do the 15th. She goes, sounds good. My cell phone is, and she sends her number, and she says, call or DM a couple days before I'll put you down in the calendar. Wow. Did I ever do that? No. Oh. Did I ever? No. Oh. Never. Oh. Never. Oh. Which is so ironic, this story. And again, I'm going to leave it there because I don't really want this. Oh, well, shit, Ethan. Ethan's apology better be good, boy. His his apology better be good. Just to be like throwing Donna under the bus because I, I'm just trying to be the most respectful here. But like <gasps> Ethan literally said that I was creeping on his mother, begging to go to dinner with her going behind his back and stuff when that's not true donna was the one who reached out to me first suggested dinner first was sending um uh, pr to my mom so damn let's let's be accurate let's tell the truth here a little bit um just a reminder that i wonder if ethan felt that way because like like adam was originally part of the group of kids that was sort of hanging out with colleen so maybe he also didn't want to run into that situation again where like a young person is again with a bigger older youtuber so i can understand ethan and Ela, but then the, for them to paint adam as the villain is sort of interesting hmm, hmm. and then let's go on to this other one trisha ghosted adam lol Called her the spawn of satan you know about all the stuff about moses and all the stuff about trisha but now you're dick riding Trisha because her pop her podcast is more popular. Did I mention that she um, she's smart for ghosting you when you tried to visit her those those few times? Yep. Which is so ironic as well that Ethan is speaking on that because Trisha and Oscar reached out to me explaining what happened there, and they were incredibly incredibly nice. And oh, if I had not been going to Vegas the following day, we would have been filming the podcast the following oh. day. It was plans. Yeah. Why did Ethan say that? Where did Ethan get that? Ethan is so bad at information sometimes. Damn. Ethan gets so many things wrong. Jesus, fuck. Jesus, fuck. How does his... You remember? You remember? Did they ever verify that poker table too? Because I remember how I was on that live stream and I was like, did Ethan's team verify that Trisha and Oscar are talking about the poker event? Because some people in my comments were like, he, they were not talking about the poker event. I'm telling you, Ethan's crew sucks at research. Is it... Is it Olivia? Is it Olivia? I th is Olivia the researcher? I think she's bad at her job. Is Olivia bad at her job? I'm so sorry. I don't mean to talk bad about Olivia because, like, she's so sweet. But, like, every time, like, who is the researcher? Like, who is the researcher in this situation? Like, don't tell her I said this because, like, I don't mean to be mean to her. But I mean, like, oh, my God. What is she thinking? Oh, is it AB sometimes, too? Oh, my God, not AB. Why don't these people know how to research? You know what I mean? What? Ah, Taylor says Ethan is bad at interpreting his crew. <gasps> do you think that's what it is? Oh, do you think it's like also Ethan is bad at like communicating? Mm, maybe he's bad at processing what they tell him and then he regurgitates the wrong thing. Interesting. In place for the new change, but my Vegas thing didn't work. Oh, let's see. Chad thinks... 
says Trisha has ghosted Adam twice and thinks she is lying to Adam when she said she would have filmed with him. But to be fair, Trisha also, after Leo Skeppi, said that she's trying to make amends and build bridges and she doesn't want to fight with anyone this coming year. Um, so maybe she's also trying to build those bridges. I don't know. Work guide. So here's my thing. I don't know if Ethan, like, wants to go dine this writ of trying to insinuate that at 18 years old, I was, like, trying to befriend his mother. Sure. When, if we want to go back, when you did the family's podcast, Donna was the one that constantly brought me up. Donna was the one that... Hold on, you guys can't say in chat, Trisha did ghost him when Adam is literally saying she didn't and this is like a day old. No offense to chat, but I'm going to believe Adam because Adam's the one who would have been ghosted and he would have definitely loved to headline, Trisha Paytas ghosted me. So no offense to chat, like I just don't believe you. That reached out to me on social media, Donna was the one who gave me her phone number and all like this. And don't play the age card because I was just 18. So don't play that card. Mm. I'm not making an issue of it. I don't, I'm not making an issue of this at all. I'm just saying, I fucking dare you to go on your podcast and lie. You're a I don't think he was lying because, well, maybe we'll see with the apology, but to lie means, you know, it's not true. That's what a lie is, guys. Fucking liar. That's what you are, Ethan. You're a fucking liar. So... Again, if he wants to push this further, we can go a little bit deeper into this, but I'll leave it there because I don't want to throw Don onto the bus because I, do, I don't think it's respectful, but I have to defend myself a little bit here. You do. Oh my you God, do. what is wrong with him? Good for Adam for defending himself. Anyways, we'll leave it there. I'll see okay. my next one. I promise the other videos are coming. I just had to get this one out first. Okay, smart. I'm going to like that video. Good for Adam. Okay, next video is Ethan Klein's apology. So I think this is important to go through. I'm going to speed Adam up just a tad, just to give us a little bit more. You know what I mean? Okay, so let's see what this is about. Because again, Adam had the receipts. So now I always go on the side of truth. You know this. A team Adam in the Ethan Donna situation. Sounds like Adam has the true receipts. Let's see if Ethan made a good apology. Hi, muckers. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing very, very, very well. Do you like the Dolly Parton merch? I got all this at Dollywood. Yes, mom. If you're watching this video, this is the shirt that I'm going to be giving you, but I felt like I just oh wanted God. to wear it once. It's so cute. I want that shirt. Before I send it to you tomorrow. I also got these little rings engraved in Dollywood. I know you can't really see it, but they have Bonnie and Dolly, my two dogs on it. And I got this little butterfly necklace because let me tell you something. If you haven't been to Dollywood, she loves a butterfly or two. Um, all right. Let's talk. So... I'm going to be addressing the second part of the H3 stream today in which they were talking about me. And no, Taylor, I love Adam, but his background is truly horrible. I literally love it. It reminds me, I used to have a YouTube background that was very similar. I took magazine clippings from all these magazines and it was my background because I used like, that's how I like decorated my room. I love it. It's so cute. It's so young. It's so Gen Z. It's so like everything that is popular. I don't, I hope he really loves all this stuff. Yes, it is. It is just too college for you. You know, to be fair, it is very college. It's very dorm room. It's very like what's popular. I mean, chapel, K-pop groups, Mariah. It is very, okay. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to clarify something first of all. So they had done that spiel about me. And that was what I had filmed on, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I saw, and then later in the podcast, maybe like an hour or so later, um, I had posted the screenshots of the actual text messages with Donna proving that what Ethan was saying was inaccurate. Mm -hmm. um, and then they went back and corrected themselves. Now, I just want to clarify that I think I've been doing YouTube long enough that I feel like people's opinions on how I should react to things mm -hmm. don't bother me anymore. And I genuinely mean that. And when this is going down, and I was getting backlash from people being like, how dare you make a video immediately before they even apologize? I'm like, what? number one, uh, that's what people did to me in my chat. Y'all are fucking crazy. Go to therapy. People are like, Brittany, I can't believe you posted this video when Adam like covered the receipts. Girl, I didn't know I was sleeping. I'm so sorry that I have a life and like I posted content before I knew new content came out. Okay. But also as a YouTuber, now I get to make more videos on the same topic and get the views. So like, honestly, girl, okay. You all need to go to therapy. It really takes being at the forefront of a live stream of over 40,000 people watching it, of someone literally just berating hate at you to know the ramifications of that. My social medias were being absolutely flooded with people. That was why I immediately tweeted out the screenshots. And if I had not tweeted out those screenshots, I would not have gotten the second part that we're going to react to now, where people are like, hmm, maybe Adam was right. Or hmm, maybe Adam mm. isn't so bad. So fuck out of here with that, like, 
bullshit of you responded too quick or whatever. The only reason I got this, which we're going to watch, is because mm -hmm. I debunked it in the moment. And thank God, because I'm jet lagged right now. Thank God I was awake. Otherwise, what? I would have had a couple days, maybe a week before they addressed this again of just like berating hate from the H3. Yeah, why would they have apologized if if Adam did make his video? I'm assuming they apologized because Adam made his video. Fans. And listen, I understand it. I get that they're so passionate, the fans and stuff, and I'm aware- Wait, I'm sorry. Are they saying Ethan apologized before the video? As well, that the H3 subreddit is absolutely ripping me to shreds right now. That is what they do. However, it's not the first time they've done it to me. Mm -hmm. Like, I have been on a roller coaster with the H3 subreddit, and they have loved me, and they have hated- Same. H3 fans, sometimes they come in hordes, and they'll subscribe, and they'll love me, and then they'll hate me, and then they'll love me, and then some of them stay and become a part of this community, which I love. But, like, they're very, like, hot and cold, which is, like, very interesting. Fandoms, what are you gonna do? Me, I have been loved, and I've been loathed. And, you know, they have absolutely, like, H3 doing these streams facilitates this hate. And, listen, I'm a drama channel. I'm not going to comment on whether that's bad or not. I'm not going to be a hypocrite. But all I'm going to say is don't comment on how someone should react to it if it's not oh. happening to you. Is that okay? Is that okay? Hmm. Is that okay? Because hmm. I was just like, wow, if only if only you went on your social media whenever uh, one of the biggest podcasts with like 40,000 people is literally just coming for you and lying about you, lying about you and insinuating that you're trying to use um, this older woman and oh my God, you're so creepy and all like that. Okay, you guys are saying Ethan actually apologized before Adam made the video based off tweets. Okay, noted. Noted. Like, please. Also, I just, this commenter says, I just want to take a moment to confirm the go to therapy line is not used genuinely, but instead as a way to dismiss someone as mentally ill and as someone who should not be listened to, go to therapy. Wrong bubble. You're understanding the context differently. Go to therapy to understand why you're having this reaction to randos on the internet. Don't make me block you. Put yourself in that. And um, it, was just, it was just really ironic to me how quickly the little mob um, go. And I know that the H3 um, subreddit are currently running with their um, little memes and stuff about me. Again, this is not my first time that I've been through this with the H3 fans. And it's not lost on me at all how much they all pretended to like me during the Colleen saga. Um, it does kind of feel that way now. Ooh, now I'm team Adam. Does, I'm so swayed. But does, I'm swayed by the truth, y'all. I'm swayed by the truth. But like, yeah, that's kind of true. They do kind of act when there's victims. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm saying this. They they do kind of act like when there's a victim involved, like their team victim, but then they kind of like drop them after. It's almost like they use them for views. I'm so sorry. Oh my God. I like, oh my God. Like I watch H3H3 probably like once or twice a week. I don't really watch it like regularly, depending on how often they post between clips and podcasts. You know, it's like twice a week. I usually catch up on a video or a whole podcast. Just, just depends. But yeah, like sometimes it does feel like they will promote... You know what I mean? People. And then kind of, yeah. Hmm. Oh, <gasps> what? Olivia celebrated her birthday with Adam a month ago. Oh my God. This is so messy. This is so messy. This is so messy. Also, wait a second. Ingrid says, wait, didn't you block this guy before? Did I block him before and he got around it? You know what, Ingrid? I'm going to do you the honor. Block him. If you want, okay? Otherwise, I'll do it. You block him in honor of how annoying his comment was, okay? Okay? Do it. Because I feel like it now. <laughs> I'm such a bitch. <laughs> this, is, this is truly my dictator feelings. This is how I know I'm a dictator. I just block a bitch because I feel like it. You know, honestly? Oh, this commenter said I've blocked them. I threatened to block them before. That was my second attempt to block you. Blocked. Bye, bitch. Bad or drunk with power. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help it. It's not lost to me at all. It's very, like, with these people, it's transactional. I understand that. I'm with their fan base even more so. Um, so, anyways, let's get to this uh, follow up. All right. Oh, 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 also, also, also. I wasn't going to address this, but I am going to address this. Um, seen a lot of comments, um, specifically on the H3 subreddit, being like, talking about Olivia. Now, mm. I've been seeing the weirdest, weirdest, weirdest connotations. True. Maeve says, drunk with self-confidence from therapy. Go to therapy, girls. <laughs> with my relationship with Olivia, right? I really like Olivia. Um, and we have had um, a friendship over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know... I went to her birthday party and to debunk the Reddit. I actually did get invited. I didn't just show up. Oh. Um, no, by the way, I didn't send the flyers on her birthday. That was not me. Don't know who that was. Um, 
And, you know, we've had this back and forth for a while now. I really like Olivia, and I'm seeing that there was a lot of people, specifically in my comment section, kind of saying, why did Olivia not speak up and stuff like that. I kind of want to end that. Um, I don't, mm. I I appreciate people. You know what's awkward is that's Olivia's paycheck. I don't know what Adam's going to say, but that is Olivia's paycheck. That's what I mean. Even with my own bridge burnings, I would never want my friends to like take my side because I know a lot of them rely on sort of the networking and associations with other YouTubers. And like, regardless of what's true or like who they think is more morally correct, I would never want people to feel threatened into a position of losing their paycheck because I know how serious that is. That is why I'm so grateful that I'm an independent content creator that with your guys's memberships and patrons and just liking the streams, I'm able to like do this, you know, without ever needing to, God forbid, not say something because of quote networking or my boss, like as much as like Ethan might be an independent content creator, his employee or his employees aren't, his employees are still employees. And so they have to be very careful about disagreeing with the boss. It's just same way as like anybody else in a business. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. People, they're coming from a good place, but it's not up to Olivia to say anything in general. And who knows, maybe she was on Ethan's side as well. Like, uh, that's what I'm saying, dude. It's like, mm. you know, after this, like, I really do have to kind of look at my relationships with people in the YouTube sphere. I think this has been a really big wake up call. Um, But that doesn't mean that Olivia should be on stream having to defend me or mm. having to speak up for me or, you know, speak up against her boss who, mm. uh, with what Ethan was, I mean, he was on one. Yeah. Um, it's not her responsibility at all. And I know that a lot of people were kind of taking that very personally on my behalf. I just want to let you know that I don't care about that. I, I Oh my God, guys, I am warming up to Adam. I am warming up to him. You know, my sibling watches them, watches him. And they were like, I watch Adam. And I was like, okay, maybe I'll watch Adam. But like, I don't know, bro. I'm not feeling it. And then now I'm seeing a lot of maturity out of him. Okay, shout out to Adam McIntyre, bro. I love to see. This is a very mature response. Ethan should take notes. <laughs> I, you know, it. I don't care. Um, it's not something that I feel she has to do or had to do. Um so I do just kind of, if you see comments like that, like, don't feel that you have to defend me. Don't feel that you have to go against Olivia. It's not deep in my eyes like that at all. Keep in mind that she is still an employee of Ethan, and I would hate that she would ever get in trouble for having to defend me. And, mm. um, you know, we have had um, a relationship over whatever time period it has, and I have nothing bad to say about her. Um, I think she's a really, really, really lovely girl. Okay. Um, she's always been so kind to me, and she's <gasps> just really fun to be around. And Beautiful. I've appreciated my time with her, and, you know, that... That's probably it now, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I will say that it definitely, this definitely has been a sort of wake up call for like, are you friends with people or are you not? Again, I am just kind of rambling right now, but it's mm. been a weird night if I'm being completely honest with you. Um, it, it's been very up and down, you know, my dynamic with H3. And I just think that this instance, like Ethan was, he was looking for something. Yeah. And he didn't get it. He didn't get it. And I'm so glad. I think Ethan was definitely like almost like triggered or defensive or very upset, which totally understandable. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Very proud of Adam for his level of maturity in this moment. That I immediately was able to debunk it because the wrath I would have felt over the next few days to a week before they ever addressed this again would have been intense. And I think that there's a part where he calls Donna, which we're going to watch. And, um, oh. you know, Basically, Donna says that nothing ever bad happened. And, and Ethan's, like, disappointed. And it just proves my point that he was, like, wanting something to come at me for. Um, now, I do also want to clarify that this part, Adam McIntyre, it does say now redaction later in the episode. Uh, let's get to this. Um, what did Adam post? Posted um, all the DMs with your mom. <laughs> Here they are. Uh, honestly First of all, <laughs> classic. Posted all the DMs with your mom. <laughs> Adam can actually say that. Adam gets to make the your mom meme. That's so beautiful, bro. Kind of exonerating him. Oh, nice. In what way? Your mom is the initiator of all of it. Huh? Yeah, take a look. Mm -hmm. She invited him to dinner. She was the one who reached out to him. It, it was your mom. And again, in my eyes still, this is all very innocent. And it's very unfortunate that Ethan mm. turned something innocent into something that is now up for debate. I don't have a bad word to say about Donna. I really don't. I really don't. She was very lovely to me that entire family's era. Very lovely to me. I have nothing bad to say about her, which is why this is so unfortunate that Ethan has turned this into something. And not only did he turn it into something, he turned it that I was 
using her and had some sort of aim and was being creepy and wouldn't leave her. So this is the part where if I was if I was him, I think I'd say, OK, there's been a huge miscommunication. Ethan seems really shocked that Dan is saying this, which means that Ethan didn't lie. It's not like he's being caught in the lie. It's just that Ethan, <laughs> Ingrid says Ethan is so stupid. Maybe he's, well, Ethan is kind of stupid. I've always said this about Ethan. I love him, but he might be dumb as rocks. You know, like, uh, Ethan is kind of dumb. Like, to be honest, he's obviously not well-read. He doesn't research. He's not interested in, like, actually diving deep. Ethan is a perfectly superficial thinker, which is also probably why he has a large audience. I said what I said, right? So, to be honest, okay, but... Yeah, like, okay, okay, this is where, I, you know, because now that you know Ethan isn't lying, he was just mistaken, or at least in this moment, it sounds like he is. It feels weird to keep going with, like, being anti-Ethan because it's like, well, okay, if you didn't know, fine. But if you do it again. For alone and all like this, and it's like, fuck ye. Fuck ye. Oh, also, and this is why I'm really pissed right now, and I'm trying to keep myself as cool as possible right now. Um... Someone, or not someone, Becky, of course, um, had posted and said, calling someone a nasty clout chaser and a rat, and then having to admit you were misled and wrong after you know they're already being called that to this day because of a story that you yourself brought so much attention to is really- <gasps> Oh, was Adam called that because of Colleen? I took Adam's side in the Colleen situation, but because he's obviously a victim. But also, this has made me like Adam even more. He's handling it really well for a 20-year-old or a young person. I don't know how old he is now, actually. Is he 20 now? Yeah, he's, he's handling it a lot better than Ethan irresponsible rude and stupid i don't care what the reasonings are and i think that's a very shitty thing to do and when you have a huge platform you should be aware of the power your words have and what they will bring to other people this really isn't my business so i'm not going to say everything i want to but wow i'll add that i wanted to scroll through some of the comments and this was the first one i saw wow who would have guessed this would happen totally unexpected consequences of doing this in front of thousands of people surely this won't cause any problems so ridiculous Becky, who was obviously in the Colleen story, had posted and its comments basically saying, now all this shit is coming out about Adam, kind of got to question all the shit he did to um, did and said about Colleen. Mm. Also, one thing I want to clarify is um, the live chat during this mm -hmm. was stuff like that. You know, mm. Team Colleen and all like this. And there's <gasps> been so many. That's not funny. Was the chat really Team Colleen? That's fucked up. That's fucked up. Did H3H3's chat turn into Team Colleen during the thing? It's not, f it's not very good, is it? It's not very good. Many comments across all the H3 things, and obviously they are not responsible for what their fans do, um, but whenever they directly rile them up, I think they are. Um, mm, I agree with that. I think if you deliberately rally or, like, encourage your fans to, like, really hate somebody and, like, go in on somebody, I think that's pretty fucking gross. Really insinuating that um, the Colleen shit was bullshit, and here's proof of it. If that doesn't make... Okay, listen to me when I say this. No adult person should be having close friendships with minors in situations in which the minor is in any way interacting with that adult in like an intimate way outside of like very specific contexts. What Colleen did with those teenagers was too far, okay? It wasn't like she was a mentor helping kids in underprivileged communities. It's not like she was a relative. It's not like she was a cousin. It's not like any of those things, right? So like- the way Colleen handled everything. She obviously has something going on. She probably needs intense therapy and she obviously is very stunted. None of this gives a reasoning, right? For like why she engaged with teenagers in the way that she did, right? It doesn't matter. I'm not saying she's grooming him because I don't know how that applies here, but she was obviously heavily inappropriate. And I do think she was the old enough person to f now a younger person has this experience, Okay. So whatever Colleen was doing with those kids, I don't know what word to use, but it was inappropriate. And I think she needs to get major therapy for it. Okay. So. All right. Makes sense to you. Just know that it doesn't make sense to me either. So, and I saw that Oliver had tweeted being like, it's really sad to see people not questioning the entire story because of, by the way, nothing I've done, but Ethan fabricating something that happened and it being on the internet. You know, for a while, and then retracting it. But it's on the internet. And he did it in front of, what, 40,000 plus people? Mm. And what are the impact of that? Okay, so people now don't believe me with the clean thing. Listen. That clean shit has been going on for years for me personally. But what really fucking bothers me, what really bothers me is Ethan Klein, who literally was able to monetize off of all of that clean shit, right? Mm. Being able to monetize off of the entire situation, right? Number one said that he cut off communications and he didn't want to be. Okay, hold on to the people who said this. 
he made videos. Where was that? Where was that video? Where's that comment? Fuck my eyes, bro. Uh, he's a cloud chaser. He milked the hell out of the Colleen thing. He made video after video after video about the Colleen situation. Um, I mean, fair. Honestly, as a content creator, he made a beautiful decision. Good decision to do that. And two, as a victim, he's allowed to be heard. And three, it's his story. He's allowed to tell his story no matter how many times he talks about it. Again, why don't people get to tell their stories? I'm so sick of the internet. Adam gets to tell his story as long as it's true. He gets to tell the story. People are like, oh, you're milking it. You're milking it. He is a storyteller about his life. He's a drama content creator. He's a person. So like he gets to tell his story. And also because of Adam, we all, the story kind of blew up, right? Like ultimately it kind of feels like why can't, if you don't like it, don't watch his channel. But to say he's a clout chaser for telling his own story, I think he's more of a clout chaser because he's like Trisha where they want to be famous maybe. But maybe I'm wrong. May, I'm willing to apologize if I'm wrong because maybe Adam is just a content creator that wants to be popular, which in that case, good for him. But maybe he's not a clout chaser. You know what I mean? It just feels weird that he's not allowed to tell his own story. Feels weird. Feels a little bit like, oh my God, are you just a rape victim who tells your rape story all the time? Ugh, so annoying, bro. We get it. You were raped. It's like, the fuck? Adam can tell his story a thousand times in a thousand different ways if he wants to, as long as it's true. With me, after the Donna thing, which happened in 2021, right? Well, why were they trying to get me on the podcast all last summer? Okay, number one. And then number two, because of Ethan, Ethan's Klein's, Ethan Klein's bitterness towards me, we now have Becky and Oliver reading comments that all of us lied about Colleen. Because of why? Oh, oh hold on. Chat says that's so dishonest to compare those things. You're you're being too black and white thinking. I'm not comparing the things. I'm comparing the idea. It doesn't matter what the thing is. We're not comparing the rape to what Colleen did to him. We're comparing the fact that he gets to tell his story no matter what. And the reaction is, why should he tell this story? Because he wants to. Let me use a better example. I don't give a fuck if he makes a thousand podcasts explaining that he ate a bagel for breakfast. Okay. He gets to make the podcast about eating the bagel for breakfast. Okay? Does that, is that better? I, because Ethan Klein lied. And the H3 fans are like, oh, well, well, he didn't have the information correct. And I'm like, wow, I wish one day y'all would give me the grace that you give him. Fuck me. The H3 fans are the first ones to fucking bite, but the ones to give the big. Because remember, like, it wasn't like, okay, and we will add non-sexual grooming to our vocabulary on this channel because I think it's important. Like, it's obviously that it's obvious that Colleen took advantage of people having, like, again, I think the dilemma with the internet is we don't know how to have relationships with anyone that doesn't feel personal. Like, we don't know how to have professional relationships on the internet. You know, it's why I work alone. I try to use people. I try to, it's too confusing. It's hard to know who to hire. You can't trust anybody because like people will be like, oh, I edited for this person. I was close to this person. I worked for this person. Like it's better just to work alone. But ultimately like Colleen did take advantage of a lot of people. You know what I mean? Like that is true. And so I just think it's weird to be like, Colleen never took advantage of people. It's like, well, Regardless of how you feel about her, maybe just in my moral book she did, but okay, you do you. Big is Grace. So I think it's really <laughs> unfortunate that uh, now Becky and Oliver have been pulled into this and they're reading tons of shit like that. Mm hmm. Anyways, back to this. Um, what did Adam post? Posted um, all the DMs with your mom. <laughs> so obsessed with the fact that I'm still a member on H3, by the way. Enjoy my money, guys. <laughs> Here they are. Uh, honestly, kind of exonerating him. In what way? Your mom is the initiator of all of it. Huh? Yeah, take a look. She invited him to dinner. She was the one that reached out to him. Mm. It, it was your mom. Mom. Towards him, not the other way around. She would always shout him out on families, I know. Eli, I'm so glad you're able to laugh about it. Take a look. Who started that combo? Let me, let me call my mom. He says <laughs> she did. What? There was no way my mom messaged him first. No, she was like a fan of his, remember? She <laughs> yeah, was watching his videos as was drama reading. Oh my God. Drama videos at the time. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. They're all clear on the story now, aren't they? But not what, 30 fucking minutes ago? Let me call my mom. Yeah, what the fuck happened? Adam's right. What happened? Like, that's so annoying. What happened between... Why did Ethan even make the initial... Okay, I guess what... We'll... Okay, let's see. He's gonna call Donna. Watching drama videos. She fucked me. I think you might need the apology. <laughs> 
<laughs> Ethan said Donna fucked him, bro. Let's see, Ethan. let's see. Let me ask my mom first before I issue his Warm name. up the podium, at least for this part. I mean, you know, whatever. Let me, let the me. current drama is you can have whatever opinion. Also, does Oz, uh, does uh, Tourette's make you impulsive? Because I feel like it makes Ethan so impulsive, but I don't know if that's actually a, 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 a symptom of Tourette's in that way. And then um, doesn't Ethan have, does he have ADHD? Because, it, yeah, he has ADHD. Okay, because impulsivity is a huge part of it. And I feel like Ethan falls into that trap constantly, constantly, right? Let me call my mom. I think she misunderstood his message because he sent her a message. And I think she read it as uh, he was asking her to dinner. Oh. It seems like she misunderstood one of his initial Let's messages. See. Let me call. Let me call. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no. My mom is involved in on air drama. Hey. Hey, babe, what's up? You, I'm live. You're live, okay. I'm here playing Mahjong. <laughs> <laughs> How are they doing? How are you doing at Mahjong? You winning? I'm, I'm, I, I won two games. I think everybody pretty much won a couple of games. It's been a pretty evenly matched uh, group here. Very good. Hi, ladies. <laughs> my, my son said hi. He's on the air. We're all on the air right now. So what's going on, babe? Is there anything they want to say? Uh, I always like to hear from the Mahjong crew. Do you guys have anything to say? Any any, any mahjong tips? No, no, no. One, well, Deanna said maybe we'll they'll meet you. It's Ethan. He's on the. He's he's got a podcast. On. Know the card. Like know the card. That's know the card. It. Oh my gosh, this is the most boomer thing I've ever heard in my life. You know he's a poker player. He, he was playing at tournaments. Him and and, and my daughter-in-law Eula, and so they like to play games. too. <laughs> Chad says his mom calls him babe. Yeah, yeah. In a lot of cultures, babe is really neutral. Um. I actually had a sibling that would call everyone babe and then, but he wasn't gay. And I was like, you can't call people babe because you're not gay. And it sounds like you're flirting with everybody and you can't call your siblings babe because it sounds like you're not gay. Like you're not gay. You can't do it. I feel like only gay people can call people babe. And so it was so funny. And my sibling's like, why? And I was like, because you're just, it doesn't work. It sounds weird. <laughs> like it sounds, so certain people use the word babe. But, like, yeah, it's just, like, you got to be gay, an old woman, or you got to be dating, okay? Two. So, I, so I have questions. We're going back in time a little bit. <laughs> Adam McIntyre, you remember him? I do. I do. And you remember? He's doing too well. He's doing fine, I think. Is he? Okay. Dad was pointing out to me that, that his, his, his viewership was down or something. What? Why did I <laughs> Emotionally, I thought, oh, his viewership is down. Stop. I oh, fuck. Got <laughs> Gag. Viewership count. I don't think that's even true. <laughs> Although I don't know. Gary, my views haven't been better. I I'm glad. He was very sweet. So I re remember when you were going to meet him for like dinner or something. Yeah. And we're like, that's super weird. Don't do it. I remember you told you, you, you said don't do it. Yes. Do you remember oh. who initiated that invitation? Um, I think it was him. Mm. I think it was him. He's claiming. He's claiming. Which way do I go? By the way, it's not that I'm claiming. I'm literally showing. But isn't it so? I think it's a bit. This is such a huge miscommunication. Okay. I want to say something that Adam would know. I'll be real with you. If Adam sent me a message saying, oh, hey, Brittany, I'm in town. If you know any good places, let me know. I would think he was secretly asking me to take him out. Not on a date, but to, sh to hang out. Because it sounds manipulative. Like, because people use this as a manipulation tactic. I hate to say it in case people don't know, but there are social games people play in which they'll say, hey, I'm in your area. Since you know it so well, what's your favorite restaurant? And then you're going to say, oh, my God, let's go eat at my favorite restaurant. So I think Donna probably thought Adam was doing that and then didn't want to reject him. But maybe Adam was innocent. And let's just say Adam was. It sounds like a huge social bubble miscommunication. And look, maybe because I'm 
also neurodivergent in that way where I'd be like, oh my God, what is this? Are they asking me out? And what am I supposed to say? Like, oh my God, what is this? Like, I would be so anxious over that message Adam sent because I wouldn't know if he was playing the 4D chess game where he wanted me to take him out or if he was just innocently asking. And then I would be like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like, I wouldn't know. So I would ask my partner, be like, what do you think Adam wants? You know what I mean? And then I would say, okay, I'm just going to say, I'm going to assume he wants to hang out, but then I have to decide if I want to hang out, but then I could invite him if I genuinely wanted to. Okay. I don't want to hang out with him. I don't have the spoons. I'll just recommend places to eat and that'll be good enough. Or, oh, I actually want to hang out with him. I'll ask him if he wants to hang out with me. So to be fair and okay, looks like a lot of you are agreeing. I, I would have this question. Now the issue is that Donna told Ethan this and Ethan without reading the message didn't give Donna an opportunity to read it a different way. And then Donna responded to Adam already and invited him out. And then Ethan and Ela heard the story and thought, oh, that's too weird. Don't do that. And now we're where we are. And this is why I love bubbles. And this is why social stuff is so hard because like there's so much anxiety that goes into this, like so much anxiety. Like I had a friend come into town and they were so considerate of my spoons and they were very much like, hey, we can hang out if you, you know, even have to cancel that day. I know your fibro. I know your stuff. Like, but I'll, I'll be in town. I'd love to see you. And I was like, yeah. And it's like so considerate, but it's also so socially not typical, right? Like it's not typical for people to say, I'm traveling all the way to your country to see you. But if you get sick that day and can't see me, I understand. That's a, that's a very considerate bubble that I'm in. I'm in a very considerate bubble, I'm like in a deeply considerate space and it's, it's such an honor to be friends with people that are so considerate of that because it is, you know, it's so nice, but it's so abnormal. Could you imagine anyone other, any other person would have been pissed. Any other person would have been so mad. They traveled all the way here and you're telling me you can't see me now because you're out of spoons. Like, yeah, like that's, so I'm just really lucky. I feel very blessed. Um, we had a great time. Um, I did run out of spoons after a certain amount of hours, but we made it work and it was great and it was fabulous and it was insane how hard it was on my body, but it was a great experience. I'm glad that I did it, but it, you know, it's one of those things where when you have a chronically ill person or you have a person who's in a different situation, it's, it's almost better for the chronically ill person to say like, no, I don't want to socialize. And then all of a sudden it's been 10 years and you haven't seen a friend because, and then everyone thinks you don't want to hang out, but it's not that I don't want to hang out. It's just that maybe I only have three hours of spoons or five hours of spoons, or you know what I'm saying? Like it took me like so long to recover, but also it was so worth it. But oh my God, the recovery was insane. So again, I'm really lucky, but I also know how frustrating that can be for people. So with that said, now I see how easy this miscommunication happened because yeah, this is, yeah, you know, thank you guys for the spoons and chats, boot emoji in the chat, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So unfortunate that his mom is not dragged into drama because he wanted so desperately to talk shit about me. Here we have Donna inviting me. I, this isn't a problem to me. Didn't make it a problem. Mm -hmm. Who made this a problem? Ethan, for no fucking reason. <laughs> Let me open it up. I haven't actually read them. I don't remember. I, I'll be honest with you. I really don't remember. I thought it was him, but maybe not because he said he was going to be out there. So here on August 7th, you te how did you get his phone number? He's not showing that. No, 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 we didn't. No, this is DM. Oh, this is Twitter DM. Okay. Yeah. Gary and I saw you had COVID. We never texted or called. Donna gave me her phone number and I never texted or called her out of respect, but obviously. Yeah, you know, Adam, I, Adam is earning my respect even more. He had an opportunity to go out with the clients and he didn't take her up on it. Props. Props. That's not anything that Ethan would bring up. I'm glad your vaccination helped. Oh, which actually puts Adam in the positive place because that means Adam was probably just innocent. Oh, wait, no, this proves Adam is innocent in every capacity because Adam asked for places to eat. Donna offered to go out with him, but Adam wasn't doing the 4D chess because if Adam was, he would have gone out with Donna, right? But he said he never took her up on going out. Feel better, Donna Klein. Nice that you signed it with your full name. Okay. <laughs> he just said, thank you. I discovered I had COVID. Uh, I tested positive, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, thank you for the message. Moving along. Um, I'll be in, so he said I'll be in LA in November. If you have recommendations. And you said, I'll make a list of things. How are you feeling? I'm babysitting my grandson, Teddy, right now. 
But when Ethan and Hila return from New York, uh, it, uh, if come out before the baby is born in November, perhaps we can all go out for dinner. Okay, I see. Well, my mom was thinking we were all friends and we were all gonna go out. Oh my God, okay. So yeah, yeah, that's what I think too. So Ethan, here's the thing. Uh, here's the fucking thing, Ethan. Isn't it crazy that now, after he came for me and that was his main thing, now he's been proven that I didn't do anything. He's literally being like, oh, well, you know. Mm -hmm. oh, right, yeah. And then he said, oh, wow, thank you so much. There's so much to do and I have no idea, Lil. Hope you and Teddy are well. I'm doing better. Such a fun trip. Better, yada, 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 yada. He says that would be unreal. I'm sure y'all know some good dinner spots, too. Don't be too sure of that, kid. You don't know me. I don't know any good place to eat. Here's some Listen, I was 18 and I had never been in America before. I need the recommendations. Recommend to see and do while you are here in L.A. And you gave him a bunch of recommendations. Uh, thank you. Wait. I just, I don't understand why he's skipping three messages then where the bottom says, Gary and I will meet you for dinner there. And she's given, like, her favorite restaurant. Like, Ethan, the reason that you created a hate mob against me was because you said that I was like fucking berating her to hang out with her and go to dinner with her and how creepy am I and you're now seeing messages that I didn't fucking do anything and you're like ah, yada 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 but that's not how it fucking works that's not how it fucking works mm. I don't know any good place to eat <laughs> here are some things I would recommend to see and do while you are here in LA and you gave him a bunch of recommendations uh, thank you you have any availability on the 15th what is that referring to the previous messages in which she thank you wait who said that that's Monday. Who said, I can't, who's blue and who's white? He said, Gary and her will take me out to dinner if you had read them, but you had probably already seen them and just went, Oop, skip. Okay. Was that for me or him? He asked you, would you have any availability on the 15th? Like, well, I think he, I think he might have meant, do you want to go out to eat or something? Because the previous message was that Gary and her will take me to dinner. Again, I don't see any. Oh, so wait, Adam did say he would go out to dinner with them. Wait, so now he could have been playing 40 chess. No, wait. So Gary did take them up. I mean, Gary. So Adam did take them up on dinner, which means that he could have been playing 4D chess now. See, now I don't know. I'm back in the not know bubble. Mm. Anything wrong with this? Like, people keep saying as well, like, like, oh, her age. It doesn't fucking matter. Oh, my God. Like, they're also acting like she's like, what's the word whenever you're like that old that you cannot See be now. like oh, alert. I was 18. She was something. We both were our own ages. No one caused this a problem. No one thinks this is weird. It was Ethan that started this. But... It started a hate mob because it was saying that I was like harassing his mom to hang out with her when that's not the truth. That's all this fucking balls, don't you? On that, that's what I would take it as. You said it. Wait, I'm confused now. Is 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 she the blue? Wait, hold on. Uh, he wasn't even playing 4D chess. It's just climbing social ladders, which is LA shit. But that you have to play 4D chess to climb social ladders. Like the part of playing fo social, climbing social ladders and networking is 4D chess because everyone is playing like. Four levels are like, if I'm friends with this person, I'm friends with this one, or, and I do this, and then I act like this, and I smile at this, and I go to this party, and I talk like this way. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's th that is the point of the social, right? Am I crazy? Who are the gray? He's the blue. Okay. <laughs> is that me or him? She said, he said, do you have any availability? And you said, that's 15 mm. or 16 works. And then he said, I can do 15. With a ton of emojis. Ton. You can do 15? So, and then we have Donick saying, sounds great. Here's my cell phone. Call me or message me a couple days and I'll put it in my calendar. And yeah, I don't but know why? why? Why did this even happen? Oh, my God. Why is any of this happening? He's not reading that considering he said that I wouldn't stop reaching out to her. Wouldn't stop texting and calling her. That's it. I feel like I'm going to have to get my hand on. Could you imagine if I gave her my number what? and she never texted me? Ethan, I'm not saying that's a problem, by the way. I'm saying that Ethan would have blown that shit up. Thank God I posted those fucking texts whenever I did. Oh, Fuck me. God. Was that your whole conversation with him? You guys didn't talk about anything else? No, that was it. Hmm. Okay. Well, I apologize to Adam. My mom misled me. I misled you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just kidding. I was calling him a creep. So here's the thing. She goes, he goes, my mom misled me. And she goes, how did I? And then he goes, oh, never mind. So it was just an excuse to shit talk. And not even shit talk, but like literally push this false fucking narrative that has had a huge knock on effect. I thought he reached out to you to try to take you for dinner and be your best friend. No, I mean, he, no, he was out here for your, your thing. I was out there for the H3 pop-up in which as well, Ethan was able to give me and my friend, you know, where we were able to just message. I don't know if it was his manager at the time or whoever mm. it was, maybe the person who was running Teddy Fresh. I don't know who it was. We texted him. We, we got in, you know, Ethan really hooked us up that trip as well, which is so frustrating that he is completely rewriting this trip. That was such a great trip, by the way. Mm -hmm. And that H3 day was so great. Whatever, whoever's number Ethan, you know, messaged me whenever he like let us right into the venue. And it, it's just like, why are you making this such an evil 
thing of rewriting. Mm -hmm. Like it, it was a great trip and there was no bad things. I think this is the problem with humans is I don't, yeah, I don't know what anyone's true, 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 true intention is. <clears throat> but it sounds like Ela and Ethan are probably triggered from not knowing who to trust. Adam's just some random kid who came into the picture. <clears throat> Excuse me. Donna and Gary being too friendly. Uh, Chad says, I think maybe this is a bubble thing. I definitely think most people ask things indirectly. Yeah, that's so annoying. <coughs> oh my God. That's what's so annoying. As people do ask things indirectly. I mean, literally, that's why. Listen, I know neurotypicals think they're the quote normal ones, but Jesus Christ, normal is so stupid. You guys are never clear. Nobody knows what's going on. You have to lie your way into relationships. Like, forgive me for wanting to be blunt. And this is exactly why my bridge burned. Because Destiny made assumptions. He assumed we were close. He assumed he knew what that meant. A caller literally called Destiny up one day and was like, why'd you burn the bridge with Brittany? And he goes, because Brittany's like a real friend and I expected more of her. And then I was like, I didn't know that and expected more of me. What? You never even asked me. You never asked me if we were real friends. Like, what does that even fucking mean? And he goes, well, why didn't you burn the bridge with Sneeko? And he goes, well, Sneeko's not like a real friend. I expect more from Brittany. And I was like, fuck, oh, Jesus, you don't even tell me. We didn't ever talk about that with you one time. I don't even think about you. Like the social pressure is insane. Like, oh my God, like you never asked me. We never had the conversation. I don't know you. Like just because you tell me things doesn't mean we're friends like in that way. But because he, a man, men always do this. But because he confided in me, I never confided in him. He knows nothing about my life. You know what I mean? Like I never confided in this person. Because he confided in me, he's like, we were close friends. Oh my God. Like this is what I'm saying. Like I don't even know what you're saying. I, my, if you want to be friends with Brittany, you better negotiate because whatever assumption of friendship you have, I'm not playing whatever game you're playing. Okay. I'm not playing whatever game you're playing. Jesus, Jesus. Like, oh my God. Stop. Taylor says a man shares one secret and they think you're besties. Literally not you. Okay. Ma'am. The burden, the way people are just like, oh, wah, oh, wah. Jesus. Oh my God, no wonder this is like deep. What a miscommunication. Things that happened and it was like, I just don't get it. Like, yeah, talk shit about me all you want, but don't try to rewrite something. Like, what then? I never met him. You guys had, you had some sort of- um, Teddy Fresh pop-up. I met AB at that and he was lovely. And in person. I've never met Ethan. No. He came to your, huh? your, your play. No, 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 I went to it, but I never met Ethan. It was so Okay, wait a second. Chat says, I remember I asked you if he would leave his relationship out of your content if he set the boundary and you were just like, no, it's on the internet. I half agree, disagree, because he's a Moses. Destiny is Moses. Destiny doesn't want to talk about his relationship because he literally knows he's the bad guy in it. That's the point. That same caller that asked him why he burned the bridge with me was like, you are bad at relationships, though. And that's what she said. And he goes, what are you, like 23? You don't know anything about relationships. This is a man in his mid-30s who can't figure out how not to cheat on his partners, who literally has the audacity to be like, don't talk about my relationships on the internet while telling me things he's done behind closed doors to hurt women. And then I'm supposed to keep it a secret? No, bitch. Don't ask your friends to keep your like skeletons in the closet and then blame them in public for why they think you're a bad partner. These men literally need to fucking go to therapy. Jesus fucking Christ. No, I'm not going to stop talking about your bad habits. How fucking dare you put me in a position where you tell me the shitty things you've done to women. You brag about it on stream. And then you have the audacity to tell me a real friend wouldn't talk bad about me. I'm not talking bad about you. I'm making it clear you do bad things. I hope you go to therapy because there's so much potential in you. But I do not live for men's potential. I don't want to fucking hear it. Okay. These people, bro. These people. Someone else that let me in. Four dot. What? My place? You guys were selling. You were selling Teddy Fresh. It was some kind of. I don't think we met him. Special I don't think you met him. No. We came up. Okay. All right. Came, there was a whole bunch of people in line. And um, I think he came out for that. Oh, we got him in. Uh, we got him a spot. Because mm -hmm. remember, I ended up sending his mother uh, a B. Oh. I remember. Oh, they sent, okay. The moms have been in contact. Yeah. And also really nice. Donna sent my mom Teddy Fresh um, hoodies or hats, which is really nice. Like I've, I like have nothing bad to say mm. about her, which is just like, it's so frustrating to go on social media and have this entire hate mob against me for something that like, 
there's no story here. There is no story here. Um, well, there it is, Adam. Do you have anything bad to say about him? Do you want to insult him? Adam? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. He's like a sweet kid. Okay. Yeah. Just checking. Yeah. Did he make- Hold on. Let me go back to that to see if Ethan is. Do you have anything bad to say about him? Do you want to insult him? Adam? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. He's like a sweet kid. Okay. Just checking. Yeah. Did he make you feel uncomfortable at any point? He's okay. Like Zach's laughing in the background. I obviously think this is like a joke, but Ethan's probably not being expressive enough to like make it convey that it's a joke, but it obviously has to be a joke because everyone's laughing. Like if it was serious, it would be different, right? Like it would be different. I think it's, I think it's obviously a joke, right? It feels like it's obviously a joke, but he should very much apologize to Adam. So I want to see Ethan fully apologize to Adam because, like, this was a pretty horrible thing to say about Adam. Obviously, Dan. Oh, Never. okay. Hold on. Let me rewind it. No. Oh, okay. Like a sweet kid. Okay. Just checking. Yeah. Did he make you feel uncomfortable at any point? Obviously, Dan. He never made you feel uncomfortable. Mm. No, he was, he was, uh, no, it was good. He was a sweet kid. Mm. That's a shame. What's the cutoff bar? Oh, wait, yes. It's just his cell phone. There's something cut off that's kind of interesting. Yeah, I saw that too. Wait, what cut off? They're talking about uh, this right here. Boop, boop, boop. Um, this message said, you don't need Ethan. Truthfully, the only reason this is not included was because I could only upload four. Um, it says, you don't need Ethan. It was talking about families, and it was like, you can create your own frenemies or something like that. It was basically making a joke that Ethan got rid of families, and she responded and was like, LOL, you're so funny or something like that. Oh. <laughs> There's a little thing. I, he already explained that this was just a joke. This was when families ended, but he sent her a message that said, I love Dan. He's been, he's been, he's been. Oh, ban this person. Ban Aaron. With all due respect, Brittany, do you really, do you ever think you talk about Destiny way too much? I don't get why he's still a freaking topic on your streams. And we don't know why Ethan talks about Moses. Why the fuck wouldn't I talk about a content creator on the internet? Do you get what I'm saying? Look at these people who are like, where does Ethan talk about Moses? What does Brittany talk about Destiny? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Why do content creators talk about other content creators? You guys are such pussies. Everyone is such a pussy, bro. Like, what is up with people? What do you mean? This man has gone on the internet to literally, like, go for my reputation time and time again. And you're asking, why do people talk about people? Because I can. I can talk about what I want. It's my channel, girl. Because I can. What are you talking about? Why do you talk about him? I, t I talk about him the way I'm going to talk about your mom. Okay? I swear to God. I swear to God, get your bubble thinking out of my bubble, okay? Sticking up for me this entire time. Jesus Thank you, Dan. You have, been you have been promoted to my favorite member on the H3 team. Thank you, Dan, for whoop, whoop. literally uh, correcting things that have been so True. wrong. That's a uh, shout out to Dan. Shout out to Dan. Wrongly said about me. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate that someone is on the team standing up for me. It's cut off on the first uh, picture. Where? Oh, let me go back. Where? Oh, this? Oh, you don't need Ethan. So there is more conversation you're not showing, Adam. I see your I see your whispering in my mom's ear trying to get. OK, Ethan is being sarcastic, but I think what's inappropriate is that he didn't apologize to a Adam first and then make the jokes. So uh, Ethan is like, I get it. Like, we're all very neurodivergent in these spaces. Like, Ethan is neurodivergent, guys. So what I would tell Ethan is like, hey, you need to apologize to Adam in a very serious way. Make a very serious apology and then you can make your jokes. But the fact that he's making the jokes feels like he's getting defensive and avoiding the responsibility. So uh, we're at the end of this video. We have six minutes left. He better apologize. Okay. Like he better in a serious way apologize to Adam. To, he said he was she, just joking. He came. Can you believe this, mom? He came to you and said, you don't need Ethan. When families was ended. I don't need Ethan. Thank you, Eli. He's trying to get, he's trying to get in your head and break us apart. Oh, and by the way, to that commenter who's like, I saw the muted, it said, but didn't Ethan talk about, uh, didn't Moses talk about Ethan? Isn't he responding? Okay. Destiny talks about me like all the time because you all send me the clips. I know he says, oh, I'm responding to Brittany talking about me. Just don't, don't you love that these men will do shitty things to shitty people? You'll state your own opinion. They'll paint you as like this horrible person. And then when you talk about it, just stand up for yourself. They're like, see, she's talking about me. That's what I'm saying about Moses. That's what I'm saying about destiny. That's what I'm saying about all these people. They're the kind of people that put you in a position to make you look like 
oh my gosh, like, oh yeah, you're the, yes, exactly, chat. You're the crazy one. You're the one. And then they sit there and they omit things from their audiences. They do all these things. And then I'm sitting here like, you were the pussy that blocked me in the first place because you know for a fact that if I got you on stream and asked you those questions, you would have to come clean with all of the bullshit. But I hope that I will never have to do that because you're going to go to therapy and fix it. The same way Ethan knows shit about Moses, he's not saying on stream because we're secretly hoping these people go to therapy and fix it so we don't have to bring it to the internet. Do you get what I'm saying? Like the fact that Moses had to go to his mother, right? To like get him to like feel validated. The fact that Destiny has to tell people, oh, Britney's BPD is acting up because she thinks I'm crazy for cheating. Like what? Because I'm crazy for omitting. I'm crazy of getting involved in people's families. Like what? Like I'm, man, please. Okay. So again, like, okay. Hello. Anyways, that's why the Moses situation is like so clear to me in a lot of ways, not because of destiny, but because of other things. Like I know people in life who do this. It's like, they're always the victim. It's everyone else. It's never their responsibility. It's everyone else's fault they cheated. It's everyone else's fault they had to do these things. It's everyone else's fault. Is it, girl? Now, Ethan is very frustrating. He's being very frustrating in this moment. So let's hope when I press play, he apologizes to Adam because that would be the right thing to do. Can you believe that? I, I, when Bam, I, I don't understand why he would say, I, need, I don't need you. No, what no, do you mean by that? When families mean. ended. Oh, that's out of line, right? That, that, that was out of place. Okay. So Ethan's laughing. He's smiling. He's like trying to create issues. Ela's laughing. It's a joke. Well, maybe he was just, we can agree. All right. We agree. That was out of line. <laughs> oh, you should start your own something. I don't know. Who knows? Okay. I don't think he meant it to be mean. Mm. I don't think he meant anything to be mean. I was not insulted by anything he wrote. I don't remember anything like that. <sighs> All right. Well, he seemed like a nice guy. I don't know. Well, so I, I have to apologize to him because I said yes, he was do. creeping on you. So, Adam, I apologize. I obviously had bad information on that one. And um, apparently you're a nice guy. No, no, no. The music is very inappropriate. The music, Zach putting on the music, super inappropriate. That's not good. Him still being on the phone with Donna. Him not looking at the camera. No, 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 no. Although I don't appreciate the you don't need Ethan comment. That's a little overstepping boundaries in a serious way no it was no, it's, no, okay. it's, everything seemed fine babe. nothing it was fine so, okay. it was fine so i'm gonna get back to my mahjong game because it's hard for me to focus while i'm talking well this was important <laughs> i appreciate you taking the call this was important <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Donna. Hold Thank on. you, Donna. He made a video about me and he said, I'm embarrassing. He said, I should be embarrassed. Embarrassed about what? About what I said about Moses. He says, the only reason I like Trisha is because her pot. The only <laughs> is Ethan pulling a Moses right now and going to Donna? <laughs> oh, no, Ethan. Uh, is Ethan literally pulling a Moses? He's like, but mom, mom, Adam McIntyre says... <laughs> The only reason that I'm saying th nice things about Trisha is because her podcast no. is doing well and that I embarrassed myself. What do you say about that? Um, I think he's incorrect. There it is. <laughs> but say it more mean. Like, say something about him. Okay, okay. That's It's funny. It's a joke. Get Donna off this phone call. Well, I mean, you know, obviously <laughs> you have a disagreement with your brother. Oh, for Christ's sake. And it has, it has nothing to do with... Uh, with, with tr I mean, I know you had a falling out with Trisha for crack. And... Um, you know, and you let the poor woman go back to her game. Literally. Sorry. Personally had uh, issues with Moses for some things that he said that were not true about your father and I. So that really. Oh, yeah, because he was talking shit about everybody behind our backs. What did he say about you again? I forget. He made some sort of comment that dad and I moved to uh, Mexico to avoid taxes. Or oh, something that was like fucking. That, so Who said that? Moses said that? Dick, it's just totally. Taxes in Mexico and. Um, Five bam. And the United States. Also, you guys were retired. You moved there when you were retired. You weren't even working. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. And nobody ever told him that. That was just no. straight up. Dude, I I literally have a person like Moses. Like, I know people like Moses. They will tell the craziest lies about you. Like, it's insane. It's insane the lies they say. Like, oh, you know this person? Um, is like, yeah, avoiding tax. Or, oh, this person is like definitely like um dealing kids are like, oh, this person, like, do you know this person cheated? And I'm like,
But is that true? Because like, if it's true, it's true. But if it's not, it's not. I don't like lying. Like, I really don't like to lie. Like, that's why I'm saying like when people lie or they omit on purpose, like in a way that's obviously for bad reasons, it's really horrible. It's like, don't do that. Now, say none of your business, say whatever. But like, mm, mm, uh, mm. I don't know. completely fabricated lie, which no. he used to, he was doing about Damn. all of us, we learned. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. One, the reasons I was like, oh my God, this guy who I've been close with all these years, I don't actually know him at all. Well, it was very strange that he would say something like that. It was very hurtful. Yeah. And that he was fam family. Yeah, know? someone you had spent time with. This is the worst apology I've ever seen in my life. Jesus Christ. Mm. Wait, I might want this. Hold on, hold on. What do you got? <laughs> whisper it. You talking to me? Yeah, whisper it. What do you have? Here, whisper it. I'm sitting right here. They can't hear. They're hard of hearing. They can't hear shit. No, then I'll give away my hand. <laughs> is, it, is it good? Let the poor woman work. Play her game. Literally. Right. It's not. It's Again, I have nothing bad to say about Donna at all. I apologize for what I said about that everything with my mom. Clearly, she thinks you're a nice guy and likes you, and I was wrong about everything I said on that. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a good guy. But his analysis is fucked up and dead wrong, <laughs> right, Mom? His analysis is wrong if he... But I think Adam means it again. I think Adam is trying to say... Ethan's only talking about Trisha because she's in the news again, which would make sense because, like, that's what you do. Like, Trisha's a public figure. I don't know why people don't get this. If you're a public figure and you're going to be in the tabloids, people are going to talk about you. I don't know what you think happens when you're a public person. Okay? So if Adam means it in that way, then, of course, Ethan's going to talk about Trisha. She's in the news. Like, her pregnancy got covered in magazines. Like, I don't know why people are pretending... Or not magazines, but mag like a drop, like a um, star and stuff. I think it was. It's like, what do you mean? Of course, people are gonna cover. You know what I mean? Like, of course, people are gonna cover. It just sounds so weird to be like, oh, you wouldn't talk about Trisha if not. Well, yeah, she's in the news, bro. Um, uh, analysis. And I know, I know what Adam's saying. Like, he wants Ethan, or he Ethan wants Trisha for the view count. I think that could be what he's saying, but he might not be saying that. He. That's how Ethan interpreted it. Just like Donna interpreted maybe the going out thing. But I would say that we don't know that. We don't know if Adam meant, because he would have to clarify, right? I'm better off without you. Of course not. You're no, not. not okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you. You hear that, Adam? She's not better off without me. No, I'm, I'm absolutely not better off without you. That's right. Wow. Okay. I love you. I'm going to go. All right. Bye. All right. Take care. Good luck out there. Hey, ladies. Hey, ladies. Uh, my husband's, my son's talking. Get ready to pay up. Get ready to pay up. <laughs> my mom is coming for you. Oh my god! <laughs> I hope. I hope I win. Maybe bingos more their speed. They can't compete. I don't think so. These oh. guys, these, these women canasta. are really good. Ethan. What'd you say, Zach? Canasta. What's canasta? That is the new. That is taking over Mahjong. Like what? I don't know how to... Okay, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. No, that was not an apology. Oh my god, that's it. There was no apology. That is not an apology, bro. That is like when your immigrant parent is like, "I'm sorry, you feel bad. I'm sorry, I made you feel bad." I'm sorry, you sorry, I'm sorry, you sad. Like, that's not, <laughs> that is not an apology. That is not, if Adam, Adam should accept it, I guess, but Ethan should know that is not an apology. Um, again, in closing, don't have anything bad to say about Donna. It's really unfortunate that something that was very innocent got blown up to something that is completely not. Um, Again, I really can't stress enough. I have nothing bad to say about her. She was really, really, really kind to me that entire era and still is. Um, mm. And I really appreciate that. Um, and it's just, it's also just ironic that people will think that I won't talk about this considering how much my comment sections are being flooded right now with people literally being like, stay away from my mom. And basically, I have to stand up um, and defend myself. And if you see a problem with that, then... I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Um, anyways, I will love and leave you. See you in my next one. Go. Okay. Apparently everyone's like, look at the pinned comment. Adam, just before you stopped the video, he looked at the vid where you called him out and started calling you more names. Adam says, yeah, I know. I just can't be asked for back and forth of him calling me names and making fun of me. What? What video was this? Did he pin? Did he put the video in the con? No, he didn't put the video in the. Hold on. What video was it? What? Okay, it's not this one because that's live right now. So they're live right now. Let me see. Is it which? Wait, which video is it? Is it the frenemies is never coming back video? Right? 
Let's see. Calling Donna about Adam. Because I believe. Some sort of comment that dad and I moved. To Oops. Fuck me, bro. Such a boomer. You don't need Ethan comment. That's a little. Oh, yeah, because. Okay. All right. There. Hey, ladies. Hey, ladies. Uh, you can't compete about how creepy it was. So reasonable. All right. Love you. Come back. <laughs> My mom all of a sudden uh, being so reasonable. Nuts. <laughs> okay, I was wrong. She kind of let me believe that. Because we were talking about how creepy it was. Well, we, I think the way it, it was revealed to us, it was just kind of like, I might be going to have dinner with Adam. And then we're He's like, already hey, posted wait, a wait, video. hold up. What you are you think talking I'm about? lied about me. You're such a dork ass bitch loser. Oh! <laughs> You're like the most clout chasing <laughs> loser ever, bro. <laughs> Good luck with that. Well, Get on that Trisha clout train quickly if you can. Because I believe. Oh, whatever. Fuck it. Good luck with that, Adam. Uh, where were we? Damn. Ethan! Uh, ugh. Okay. Man, the maturity levels of this community is like 10 years old, bro. Damn, that was wild, Ethan. I go to therapy. That's really what I recommend. But yeah, I think Adam handled that really maturely. I think Ethan handled that really immaturely. I still think Moses is more toxic than Ethan, and Ethan is more toxic than Adam, and Adam is more healthy than Trisha, and... <laughs> Adam handled that really, really well. He handled it against these 40-year-old adults. Everyone is so old. Yeah, so good job on Adam. Like, Adam handled that really well, okay? That's so funny. That's so funny. Jesus. God, everyone is so fucking childish in this bubble. Oh, that was rough, bros. Okay, shout out to Adam. I think he did a really good job showing re re receipts. I still think there's a miscommunication happening probably between everybody, but it that's the bubble miscommunication, I think. I think that's what's happening. You know what I mean? I think that's probably a lot of the miscommunication going on. But hey, that's why, well, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. All right, let's move on. Oh, Jesus. You would think Ethan was the one half the age of Adam based off the immaturity, but nope, nope. You know? No, stop it. I don't think e therapy will help Ethan grow up. He is just that way. Okay, well, might as well give up on all of the humanity then. Jesus. Like, I'm an optimistic person, bitch. Like, people can get better. Therapy, philosophy, all of that stuff. But also, you know, this immaturity level keeps you also very popular. Let's be real. Some of the biggest content creators are deeply immature because everyone loves a battle. Everyone loves the back and forth. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. Ethan's probably going to stay this way because it's comfortable and because his wife doesn't care and because his friends yes man him. Keep in mind, like, again, I think Ethan and Ela are probably more right in the Moses situation because Moses lies about people. But Ethan has a hard time taking accountability in a way that's meaningful. And that's a that's also a problem. You know, it's also a problem. Yeah, so fingers crossed that they all go to therapy and do philosophy and figure out them. Uh, they're, uh, um, they're, maybe Ethan can hold himself accountable because he doesn't actually think he's wrong. And because he thinks Adam's a bad person, he thinks he gets to be shitty to him. Mm, yeah, yeah, maybe that's it. Something like that. You know, maybe it's something like that. It's hard to hold yourself accountable if you really don't think you betrayed your own values, right? And maybe he didn't. And then it, then he doesn't owe him an apology because he, he should apologize unless it's actually a part of his own value system, right? I don't, I don't believe in fake apologies. I never want an apology unless you mean it. Otherwise, like keep your apology to yourself. Like, absolutely not. You know what I mean? Just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense 
Cause I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun.